Okay, we're back here live in Boston, Massachusetts. This is, we're here for HP's Vertica's End User Conference. I'm John Furrier. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. Uh, this is uh, HP's uh, premier end user conference gathering. Um, not, a lot of, not a lot of promotion of HP products, not a lot of hyping up the vendor you know, software, really more about the customers, and we're here getting all the stories, the use cases, the technology, the ecosystem. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org. Uh, George Kadifa is here, he's a CUBE alum. We're very excited, George, to have you on. You, you, I've been saying for years, HP's really got to get it going in software. They've now got the technology, and they've got a, a, a leader with vision, so we're very excited to, to about HP software, and excited to have you back on theCUBE. Thank you, thank you, and same here. Yeah, so thanks. We watched your keynote uh, this morning, and I think you really laid out a very compelling story for HP software, but um, you know, it's fundamental to that story is you guys are looking to the future. You know, there's an old saying, a cliche in the United States, of course, it's called skating to the puck, right? Yeah. Referring to the hockey yeah. analogy. You guys are skating to the puck. Right. Um, you're not so much worried about the old relational world, you know that world very well. Talk about your opportunity with HP Software. Sure, sure. Uh, Dave, I, I just finished a, a keynote speech here, and uh, what we did is we introduced a new platform called Haven. And what the Haven platform is, is the largest big data platform in the industry today, which is trying to take advantage of two key drivers in the marketplace, in the technology side. The first driver is uh, the availability of information and the capture of all kind of information. That is, in the old days, you used to capture information that fit into rows and columns, you know, relational technology. And now the kind of information are anyway from video streams, from tweets, from social likes, from uh, audio streams, uh, from PDF files. We're finally able at HP and HP software through Haven to capture 100% of information generated by the world. And, uh, and, and we, we categorize it into business kind of information, machine information, and human information. We're able to do that through that platform. That is a 10x, a 10 times factor in our capabilities versus everyone else, which is expanding the information monetization by a factor of 10. The second piece is the growth. Uh, what we know is uh, information generation today, based on these, kind of, you know, on these new kind of information, is growing at 10 times faster than traditional business information. It's really doubling every year, if not more. And, and that 10x in growth and 10x in information monetization, if you multiply the two numbers, you get an opportunity of 100 times, uh, create a 100 time opportunity from the traditional relational world. And that 100x opportunity is what is making us very aggressive and at the same time very hopeful that there's a whole new market to be created around big data to build new kind of applications, and that's what we're calling an apps, these new applications. I like the little history lesson that you, you gave. You went back, said back in 1990, SAP, a little, you know, little company, you never yeah. would have bet that SAP would have been the leading ERP vendor, and the database business is, uh, if we can even call it that anymore, is really about to get disrupted. Right. Uh, and so, um, right. talk about your vision with regard to how you go after that new opportunity. Sure, sure. Uh, again, uh, you know, starting in the early 90s, an, a, a large number of new companies got created because of really relational technology initially. You know, you know I, I attended actually the first, the launch of SAP in the United States in 1990 at the <laughs> Sofitel Hotel in Redwood City. <laughs> How many people were there? <laughs> uh, it was a small room. Yeah. It was less than what we have here at yeah. Vertica at, at the conference uh, here today. And, and, and since then, great companies like SAP, or you know, companies like Oracle, PeopleSoft, Siebel, you know, all these companies got created. And also, a lot of system integration companies grew significantly. You know, in those days, it used to be called uh, Anderson Consulting, it's now Accenture, Deloitte, uh, Capgemini, Anson Young, all these companies got created and expanded based on that information capability in relational technology. Today, we have a 100x factor here. And that's what really excites me because I expect new kinds of applications, and we're seeing a lot of them today, be it in social awareness, be it in operations analytics, be it in security analytics, et cetera. There are massive amount of uh, uh, opportunities in front of us. And what is new here, that is in the old days, we applied relational technology for streamlining, 
for supply chain management, for cost reduction, for efficiencies. So it was a bottom line exercise that created a lot of business value. But here we have a top line opportunity. That is what big data is all about, is creating new business models, is creating new revenue stream, is trying to understand your customer more to react quicker. So it's a top line story which we really lack today. That is our economy isn't growing the way it should grow. And with big data, I'm very uh, hopeful and actually I'm, I'm very confident that we are going to see back a growth story here instead of just an efficiency story. Yeah, and I think on, just on that point, we heard yesterday uh, Billy Bean from the Moneyball, obviously it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's, it's kind of gimmicky, but it proves the point right. that Glenades can compete with data um, and have a competitive advantage. You mentioned top line. That's just really the right. disruption that with the data, with using it in a way that's different, you can actually get a competitive advantage and change the value chains of companies. Correct, exactly. Um, so, so with that, I noticed uh, in your keynote, I want to get your perspective on this. It's, a, it's an architectural configuration at HP. Do you put autonomy out front? Do you put Vertica out front? And you know, Dave and I were commenting, I'd like to get your take on this, is that Vertica is a nice hardened environment right, right now for customers. And we've heard in the hallways here that that's enabling software developers, yeah. not just you guys, but yeah. other software developers. Yeah. Um, is that part of the strategy? Let autonomy settle on its own with customers where they need it and let, let uh, Vertica be the hardened enabling platform? Uh, not necessarily, that is what, that's why we've built Haven, which is a platform that, is, that, that assembles all our capabilities. And as I presented in, uh, in my keynote is, what Haven is all about is to bring autonomy, Vertica, Hadoop, our logger technology, all these pieces together, uh, where we will basically give you three core elements. The first one is these connectors. We have about 700 connectors that can ingest and manage and, and, and search and index all kind of information, and that's unique for us. Then we have these strong engines between the Atomi idle engine, between the Vertica engine, between the ArcSight logger engine, et cetera. These are the engines that are unique, that will enable speed, that will enable processing, that are very capable of taking advantage of 100% of that information. And then the third piece are the applications, uh, what we're calling the N apps. And these new applications, which I'm very confident are going to dwarf what we've seen in the past in terms of capabilities. These new applications, we're very committed to building an ecosystem around them and to go to the developer community and provide them with the tools so that they can build these applications. So that's the Lego the blocks for you guys. That's the Correct. Lego blocks and the engine's the enabling platform. Correct. But it's not just Vertica, it's, it, but it's driven around speed. So you harden right. that environment for customers. Correct, yes. And yeah, it's, it's, is it programmable? It, it is programmable today, and we're going to announce soon a major developer conference we're going to hold early next year uh, as part of our global partner conference. Critical, right, because I, mean, I wanted to ask you, I mean, HP's not known for you know, its mojo with developers. You think of companies like Microsoft and, and others, right. so, so that is obviously high on, on right. your agenda. Right, <laughs> right. Well, Dave, let me give you more history here also, since we're part of history. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you remember, the first time Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak met where, was at HP. It was a part yes. of the, uh, home, uh, yeah. the Homebrew Computer Club. Right. And that's a tradition that HP had in the past and we want to maintain it and we want to expand it. So developers are not foreign to us. Developers are us and it's core to what we do. And we want to do more with developers. The beauty here is instead of programming on four bit microprocessors in the old days, what we have here today, we have Haven. We have a huge capability where we'll be able to deliver uh, the promise of big data for all our customers and our partners. And you also mentioned you're rewriting much, big, large pieces of your software portfolio in Haven. Exactly. Did I get that right? Yes, yes. Okay, so I have to ask you, because I, I, when I heard that, I said, okay, that's good, it makes, right. it makes sense, and then I said, I started thinking about Oracle Fusion apps mm -hmm. and the, the time it took to do that. Now I think right. ultimately it's going to work out, uh, right. uh, but it was, it was a, a long slog. Uh, talk about how long that's going to take and, 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 and what the outcome is going to be. Yeah, it is, one is, we are, you know, Fusion was a different story. The Fusion was capturing or trying to integrate disparate applications through acquisitions. Mishmash of a mishmash Microsoft of and Siebel. And right. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is a very, very difficult thing to do. What we're doing here is very different. We basically, we have full control of the stack, of the technology stack. We have built that stack, and it's very easy for us to actually imp you know, augment it. So it's not a rewriting in the way of rewriting, it's more of an augmentation. Mm. And we already, that is in literally in six months, 
we've been able to show these applications like in operations analytics or in service management or in security analytics, in all these areas, you know, we really built it based on a sound technology platform that is here today, that is proven with thousands of customers and with real revenue. That is, uh, our big data revenue exceeds a billion dollars today. It's more than 25% of our total revenue in HP software, as an example. And that's pure software. That's not uh, the services side inside HP or outside HP or other kind of applications. Ah, okay, great. HP, yeah. obviously the history of HP is, is very engineering, right? Bill and Dave, go back to the, the right. history of HP, you mentioned right. this, you know, the WAS and those guys. HP was an environment where people share. It was like a very collaborative yeah. engineering environment. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I got to ask you now with that, that going out with the developers, now you're seeing a lot of success with these accelerators and we're, we're trying to get computer science guys to do more machine learning, do more, um, you know, whether it's uh, audio with Siri, new, sure. new AI type technology. So, the, but there's a big startup crunch going on. Mm -hmm. People can get started quickly, so right. some of the things we're working on, and, but there's a big gap between getting that big round of financing. Are, are you guys going to, in your marketplace, accelerate or do anything with, with developers and apps? Because we heard that here at the conference that uh, Vertica has a yep. marketplace developing. Yep. But it's not so much an app store per se, it's much more targeted towards software, or is it a mar marketplace with apps? What, what's, your, what's your vision there? Yeah, actually we've announced it. It's a marketplace for apps for, uh, around the Vertica ecosystem, and we're going to augment it towards Haven also. Uh, we actually used our own technology in terms of the marketplace components and we have it available today, and we use it also for our um, Moonshot servers, where they have similar software applications running on top of it, and we also use it for, um, uh, for other areas where we have a mobility platform called HP Anywhere, where again, we deliver that catalog and that marketplace to our end customers. And in some cases, actually, some of our enterprise customers, they actually want to, um, uh, to use that internally as their own app store and we'll harden it for them. You know, I like what you said about Moonshot and this one thing we commented on the intro today and, and, and the summary yesterday is that HP is not trans, oh, this is our division, we're going to just do our stuff and you know, other guys do that. And you guys are really looking at kind of this new breed of software. And I want right. to ask you the question because you've seen the, the hat, you've lived in the history, now you're, you're pioneering the future, which we think is the right, the right road. What is the modern era look like? I mean, you know, to use the baseball analogy, because you know, the modern era is about data with Moneyball, right. beans here. What's the modern era of software? I mean, obviously, NApps is clear, great vision, and that's sure. enabling. It's sure. Lego block driven, leveraging hardened infrastructures like the old OSI stack in the, in the day. But what's your vision of the modern era of yeah. software and big data apps and all of the above? Sure, sure. That is the first one is the core component to it, the core infrastructure piece, if you start, you start at several layers of the technology stack. The first layer is you're going to have a hybrid world where as a developer of software, you're going to have, your infrastructure becomes, uh, you, know, uh, you know, not just virtualized, it becomes infinite. Where you can go to get computing resources or uh, you know, you can acquire it internally, you can acquire it externally, you can acquire it instantaneously. It's going to continue to decrease in terms of total cost of ownership. So you're going to, in a way, it's an era of infinite computing resources we're approaching. The second piece, it's an era of infinite information. And what I mean there is, uh, if you look at the last two years, statistics I've seen recently is, in the last two years, humanity has produced more information than we have ever produced from when we started uh, walking out of the savanna in Africa till 2003. That is, the amount of information created is unbelievable. So it is, so we have in infinite uh, computing resources and infinite information. When you look at these two components and you say, well, what do I do with this? That's where the opportunity is there. And that's why we're very excited at HP in software. And that's why we're building uh, capabilities around uh, you know, around uh, platforms like Haven where we can ingest and manage and index and, and provide the core capabilities for that infinite information. We at HP through a pan HP effort will give you also these infinite computing resources through our converged cloud and our converged infrastructure. And also more importantly, we build an ecosystem around it where we are open, we partner with people. We're not trying to be a monopoly, we're trying to be as open and broad 
and we focus on the customer experience. You can because have technically infinite apps, but that would kind of go over the top, but a lot of apps, there's millions right. and zillions of apps. Right. Um, so there's a lot of orchestration challenges in there, so that's why you look at the, the NF, so that's why we're Haven fits sure. in, right? Whether you're dealing with a legacy environment, right. or, or, or Greenfield, or a clean sheet of paper. Correct, correct. Um, so what so about open source? Can you talk a little bit about uh, where open source fits into, I mean, open, clearly, sure. HP's, you yeah. know, of, of all the yeah. big companies, HP yeah. is, you know, I would, I would argue the most open but specifically open source. What, what are your thoughts on the latest trends in open source? I mean, obviously OpenStack is something that you right. guys are behind, yep. but I wonder if you could talk, yep. add a little bit more color to that. Yeah, again, open source is a key component of our strategy and we embrace open source. Uh, we're very bullish on, on, on the model of open source which creates collaboration, and that's what we want. But that's why in Haven, the H is Hadoop. And we want Hadoop to be as pure open source as possible because it's really the repository to store information and we're very committed to a very strong open source support for Hadoop. Similarly with OpenStack on the cloud side, you've seen us, we, 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 we're in the top two or three uh, uh, contributors to, to the OpenStack community mm -hmm. today. So, uh, John and I were talking about this before, but I wanted to ask you, so you've chosen not to do your own Hadoop distribution. A lot of people are, everybody's doing a Hadoop distribution. John jokingly says SiliconANGLE is going to do a Hadoop distribution. <laughs> but I want to ask you why <laughs> HP chose, you know, early on, not to go down that route. Uh, back to your point, Dave, because we are uh, committed to open source. Uh, we want to make sure that we are as broad as possible so that we don't fork the code or we don't confuse the marketplace. Uh, we're in the business of giving you options and choices and to support them and to be behind them versus trying to mm -hmm. divert things for our own benefit. Uh, in, the old, in the old days, Linux was a, a big alternative and, and what Linux has done is create a massive distribution of, right. of software free. And, uh, but at the time, there was a threat. There was IBM, uh, HP, and Sun had operating system, HP UX, Solaris, and IBM had their, their version. I forget sure. what it was called, AIX yeah. or something else they had. Um, and so, the community had to come together. Right. They could, they had to have solidarity. Right. Um, Hadoop doesn't have that force, so there never was a driving force, it was all opportunity. But Dave and I were talking about the fragmentation, you just addressed that. You don't want to see fragmentation Correct. in, in right. Hadoop. You'd right. like to see some solidarity around a one stable Apache platform. Exactly right. Yeah, that's our current position. So that's now the new threat, Right. is fragmentation. Right, right. Yeah, and that's why, that's why we're, uh, we're proponents, strong proponents of open source. We don't want that to fragment. Yeah, yeah and you've seen a lot of the, uh, the standards games play. We, you know, we were saying in theCUBE that the, old, the new standards bodies are the, are the open source communities now, not Correct. the IETF or the IEEE. Correct. Uh, and you're seeing right. those same games being played in these, in these communities. Right. So what's your message to the folks out there that are, that are in the open source community? And, and obviously HP has a lot of muscle and has a lot of interest, commercial interest, in seeing open source be successful. What's your, your message to the folks in the open source community around the future of, of standards and de facto standards? I, would, I think it's driven by innovation. You know, standards in the past uh, stopped innovation. And to us, what, when we look at open source, uh, I have the, the, the famous quote from Richard Solman, which is, you know, open source gives you freedom. You know, it doesn't, it's not, it gives you free software. People are not interested in free. They're yeah. interested in free, like in freedom. Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to solve a problem. In, and, and what open source provides is the framework of creating value and, and, and solving problems in the most uh, economic and, and the fastest, fastest way possible with the widest community. There are people who want that support eventually and we'll work with them on supporting these kind of open source frameworks. But in general, we want to, put, to maintain that freedom so yeah. that innovation doesn't stop. And if you think about, go back to the old OSI model, then those seven layers of innovation, really that was the first two layers were standard based, you know, the Ethernet right. open ring yep. and access, you yep. know, physical media. Uh, but there was a lot of debate about TCP IP. Right. <laughs> and that became a de facto standard, which then created 3Com, Cisco, right. and a huge amount of innovation and wealth right. creation. The internet. Right. Um, and, yeah. then, you know, and then the rest, top of the stack kind of kind of shook itself out. Right. That's where everyone played nicely. And you remember made there money. used to be something yeah. called token ring? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the ethernet. Again, this is the beautiful right. thing about the innovation standards start that. So, but, right. but TCP IP was a de facto standard. So right. at some point, some sort of consolidation de facto standards have to kind of come together and everyone gets behind it and that's the pioneers. What de facto standards do you see emerging that you get excited about right now in today's market? Because there's a lot of open source activities, a lot of new things, there's open stack, there's Hadoop. What things are yet to be standardized that you see that are kind of becoming de facto that are really going to maybe create that next big opportunity, like a TCP, a disruptive enabler? Well, I am very bullish on OpenStack actually, as, as the layer, as that infinite compute layer. 
I'm very bullish about it because the, the market is finally ready. They understand the promise of the cloud. They understand the capabilities acquired through you know, traditional virtualization. And what OpenStack is going to provide is a huge opportunity to create a framework where not a single vendor you know, controls the compute stack anymore. And, and that's, that, that to that's me. That's freedom. That's freedom. Yeah. OpenStack is freedom. Yeah. Um, so I got to ask you, the obvious <laughs> follow up there is, that's is a headline you know, right there. people have said, hey, uh, while, while the, the world agrees with what you just said, right. others have said, hey, the de facto standard is AWS and OpenStack needs to embrace AWS for the public cloud. Based on what you just said, George, uh, I, I could infer, hmm, there's a place for AWS, but there's a bigger place for, for openness. So, you know, Randy Bias came out and said right. it needs to embrace the uh, OpenStack or, or right. uh, AWS right. APIs. So would you, would you disagree with that? Would you partially agree with that or fully no, agree with I, that? I fully agree with uh, what Randy Bias said yeah, okay. because I think it was very insightful. I don't think we, that is, frankly, uh, OpenStack is a, my view is OpenStack is a framework and it has to basically integrate from an API point of view with any uh, what I call hardware platform. That mm -hmm. is AWS at the end of the day sure. gives you computing resources. And you know, so instead yeah. of giving you a physical server, you get a virtual server. Whatever hardware the customer wants to use. Right, right. so yeah. to me, it's like it's a retailer. Again, it, actually it is a retailer. Yeah, infrastructure yeah. as a service retailer. Right, exactly. It's processors, it's disk drives, and right. you know, maybe some database in there. Right, but again, yeah. that's not the architecture of computing. You know, that is, you know, from mm. there to, to a user having a platform to, to develop you know, code uh, in a mission critical basis is a huge, uh, th there are huge elements there that need to be solved, and that's where OpenStack is important. But I don't see any contradiction, I think. I, I can see, I agree with Randy on, on, on his point of view. George, well, so we're getting uh, cut on the time here. I want to personally thank you for coming on theCUBE. We appreciate uh, coming on another time. As an alumni now, we'd love to have you. We think you're doing great. We love the vision of HP. Still a lot more challenges to go, a lot more uh, ground to pioneer, still early days. So uh, congratulations, love the vision, love the execution. And the customers obviously are voting with their feet, sold right. out, and, yeah. and there's no lightweights here. A lot of heavy duty customers here. Yeah. It's not like uh, you guys just kind of put some plants in here for customers. HP did a good job, you guys did a good job. Thank and, you. And talking to them in the hallways, they all got chops. Uh, and again, it's a modern era. And, yeah. and uh, openness, yeah. freedom, and uh, again, innovation. Right. Um, Great. So HP Software is end user conference, the leader of the troops, uh, George Kadifa. We're here, uh, the Cube, SiliconANGLE, we'll keep on exclusive coverage of HP's event with Vertica End User Conference of big data and computing, infinite computing, infinite data, and N apps. And uh, we're, we're right back after this short break. <laughs>